Hello friends, welcome to a very special video today. This video is in celebration of my nine years raw vegan anniversary. So this anniversary falls on September 12th. I went raw and vegan on September 12th, 2014. So today marks my nine years having been raw and vegan. I'm vegan always for the rest of my life and raw because I thoroughly enjoy it. I love, love eating raw foods and so I choose raw foods every single day and have for the last nine years. So I wanted to make this video showcasing how I personally feel I have been successful over the last nine years. And I want to share some of that with you to see if it resonates with anybody, if anyone's struggling with adding more raw to their diet or just healthy choices in general, hopefully these um, thoughts can help you. Thank you so very much for joining me for this video and especially thank you to everybody who has been here either since the beginning or since right now, <laughs> today. Thank you for spending the time with me. Thank you for all your love and support over the years. It has been an incredible journey and I am so incredibly grateful for each and every single one of you. You're amazing and wonderful and I adore you. So before we begin though, we have as always 40% off any or all of our raw vegan recipe eBooks. The code is rawfood40 and you can use the code at checkout to get a 40% off discount off all of our eBooks. This includes the wraps, the new wraps you can make yourself if you have a dehydrator, Dive into the wraps ebook. You can make the coconut breakfast burrito wrap, the Italian pizza wrap, the green goddess wrap, or the extra special fun donair wrap. I also really love the honey I love mustard wrap with the mustard sauce that we use on so many other wraps, the sweet carrot raisin wrap, the crunchy collie ginger wrap, the rainbow ginger wrap, and so many more delicious wrap recipes. Also, our tacos. The tacos have been so popular lately because we have the hard shell corn taco, raw and super crunchy, so delicious. This is one of our favorite things to take camping and to just eat because they're so delicious. You can also get a book called The Burger Book, which is full of our burger recipes. There's an ebook full of soups, stews, curries, and chilies. So you can make some cozy soups and stews, the minestrone, the Italian wedding, the spicy ginger chicky noodle soup, which is one of my absolute favorites. So many great choices in that ebook too. There's appetizers, there's salads galore, tons of salad dressings, get that drizzle on, and smoothies and ice cream. So many options for you to choose from. So head on down to our store if you're interested in including more raw foods into your life. You don't have to be a raw vegan to enjoy some more raw foods because we know they are so beneficial to us. So again, code rawfood40 at checkout if you wanna get the discount. So nine years raw. When I first went raw, I never thought I would get here because I had always tried over and over and over and over again from 2004 until 2014 when I was finally able to stick to a raw diet. So what has made me successful over the last nine years and what will bring me through the next nine and the next nine after that? What have been some of the things that I personally feel have been instrumental in my success. Well, number one is variety. Variety of raw foods has really been helpful, especially with building my gut microbiome over the last almost decade. So having more variety in my diet has really improved my gut health and my overall health. So I dealt with candida overgrowth and severe digestive issues for almost two decades. The candida was diagnosed when I was about 19 and I had been battling it ever since until I went raw. I had done 
fasts and cleanses and detoxes and anti-candida diets. I did the no fruit thing. I did the high meat thing. I did all kinds of stuff to try and get rid of my candida. I also took a lot of supplements and probiotics. I went to practitioners. I did acupuncture. I went to my naturopath and nothing seemed to get rid of my candida or fix my digestive issues that I had been having, let alone my acne, my hormonal issues my mood, my joint pain, all of that. Like it was all connected, but it wasn't until I went raw and I started eating way more variety of foods and building my microbiome, which I didn't even know I was doing back then. It's only in the last couple of years that I really realized that what I was doing by going raw and eating a large variety of both fruit and greens with sprouts and all that kind of good stuff was really actually building my microbiome and my microbiome was what fought off the yeast and all the other good stuff like the short chain fatty acids and the absorption that's improved when you improve your gut, like all of these things happened because I was eating more variety in my diet. I was exploring all the different kinds of raw food. I wasn't restrictive to one single food group, like not only fruit or not only greens, I did both. And I value both equally because they both have so many amazing things to offer in their own ways. So why not have a combination of everything and enjoy it all? So that's what I think was one of the top things. The other top thing was making sure I ate enough every day. So obviously not every day is going to be super perfect, but I do strive to make sure that I eat adequate amount of calories for my body's basic needs plus any activity through the day, which involves doing household chores or going shopping or working or playing or adding exercise, any of those extra activities I have to account for calorically in order to have enough energy for the day and not be hungry all the time. Because when I first went raw in 2004, when I first discovered raw, I would try and I'd fall off. I'd try and fall off and try and fall off, but I was always calorie restricting down to a low minimum because I was under the belief that I needed to restrict to lose weight and that I had always been dealing with my weight. So I wanted to eat less, but that was causing a lot of hunger and cravings within me because I just was not fueling my body. Even though I was eating raw foods, I was eating very little of them and I was also eating way too high fat because if you don't eat enough fruits and vegetables, you're gonna default to the dense calories like fats or even cooked foods. So making sure that I ate enough was so important to sustaining my raw diet and to this day, I still make sure that I eat enough so that I don't end up really super hungry or missing calories or missing nutrition. So eating enough is definitely something super important to me. The third thing that I think has been instrumental in my success is having fun and getting creative in the kitchen. And you all know I love to get creative in the kitchen. I've made so many recipe ebooks over the years and there's more to come. Obviously, I've got so many ideas of things I wanna share. So getting creative has been really helpful in keeping me excited, especially in the early days when I was still exploring and I still didn't have all of the amazing things that I eat now. Like today, I have hundreds of recipes that I could fall back on. But when I first started, I didn't have very many. I had a couple cashew dressings I liked. Eventually, I made my French dressing, which I ate almost every single day for the first year and a half of my raw journey. I still love that one so much. But I only had a a handful of really good recipes that I used as what I call my fallback five. Five recipes that you know really well, that you always have ingredients on hand to make, and that are easy. So if you make those, then when you're in craving time or stressed or bored or whatever, you can just default to making one of those fallback five recipes and you know you're gonna love it, you know it's gonna be easy, it's gonna be quick, and you already have everything on hand to make it. That's why the French dressing was one of my dressings that I would always fall back onto because it was so easy and I always had everything on hand for it. And for those who are curious, the French dressing that I ate almost every day was five medjool dates, two cloves of garlic, the juice of one lemon, a little apple cider vinegar, some smoked paprika, and a little bit of chipotle. 
So it'd be like half a teaspoon smoked paprika, an eighth of a teaspoon chipotle powder, blend it up with about a cup of water, and I had my dressing for my salad. So I would get a lot of the calories from the dates, and then I started to switch it up. I'd add like a tablespoon of chia seeds to it to give me some omega-3. Sometimes I'd add ginger, or sometimes I'd use orange juice instead of water. So I would change up the flavor a little bit from that dressing, but that was the base dressing for pretty much almost all of my dressings stemmed from that one dressing. So that's a really important one too, is to get creative in the kitchen and play around with different ingredients, try new recipes from other people, adventure in the kitchen. Even if it's not really your thing, you can always try to make new recipes because getting creative and having fun is going to be a lot more motivating than resenting having to go into the kitchen or feeling like it's a chore. Next up is habit. So over the last nine years, I have built a super solid habit of choosing raw food whenever I'm hungry. So people tend to get hunger and cravings mixed up because they do go hand in hand. When we're hungry, we crave food. What we crave though is greatly determined on our current habits. What do you usually default to when you're hungry? What's your favorite restaurant? What are your favorite dishes? What are your friends and family eating? What's easy? What's convenient? What's traditional? All of these things create the craving, what the craving actually is. So hunger is a natural signal. We don't need to control it. We don't need to judge it. We just need to honor it. Hunger is always going to be there. It's always going to exist every single day. So honoring our hunger and honoring the frequency of hunger and just eating when we feel hungry is going to be very helpful. But what we crave really depends on our daily habit choices. So when you change your habit, you end up changing your craving. So in the beginning, I did have cravings because it was habit. I would crave things like Chinese food or potato chips or Doritos, I ate a lot of those, energy drinks. I would crave those things every once in a while, not often because I was eating enough, but you know, every, every once in a while I'd get some kind of a little craving and I'd be like, that just means I'm hungry. I need to go fuel my body. What am I gonna fuel my body with? And then I would choose fruit or make a smoothie or have a salad or make some raw nori rolls or something. I would make something that I loved that's raw food to quench the hunger, because it's not the craving that you need to quench, it's the hunger that you need to quench. And most people go too long without eating. They skip meals, they're not eating enough, maybe they're portion controlling, or they don't even know what kinds of portions to eat. And then they end up craving, or they're like, I'm hungry all the time, but it's really because they aren't fueling themselves enough. So recognizing that when you have a craving, it's actually just a symptom of hunger. And then choosing something healthy that you love in place of what you would habitually crave will eventually change the habit because now after nine years, and it actually didn't take nine years to get here, it was pretty quick in the beginning. But now when I do have hunger, I instantly crave fruit or a smoothie or a salad. Sometimes I crave sweet, sometimes I crave savory. If I crave sweet, I just go over to the kitchen, I chop up some nectarines or I peel some bananas or have an apple or two or a bunch of oranges or a couple mangoes. If I'm hungry, I will go and eat those if I'm needing something sweet or I'll make a smoothie, a big variety fruit smoothie or have a melon or whatever. But if I'm craving something savory, that's when I will make a salad or blend up a raw soup, or maybe it's at mealtime and I'm hungry, we're making raw nori rolls, or we're making wraps, or tacos, or any of those savory delicious meals, then we choose that. So really, the craving is between sweet or savory, but you know what to choose when you have one of those cravings. You either choose fruit or smoothies, or salad, or something savory like that, that is raw food that you love. So those are some tips for building the habit is to recognize what the craving is and why you have the craving and then to honor your hunger. So the more often you do that, the easier it gets because the more often we repeat a new habit, the easier that new habit gets until it becomes default, it becomes your reality. Like my reality is choosing raw food. It's just a normal natural default, but it was not always like this because my habits needed time to change. And this takes 
time, patience, and consistency. I also strive to stay low fat. I strive to, that means that some days I do a little more fats. <laughs> uh, but for, most, for the most part, we strive to stay low fat, which means around 10% of our total calories for the day come from fats. And I eat around 2,400 calories a day, give or take, which is roughly, I don't know, about 27 grams of fat-ish for 10%. So that's really not a lot. It's about a shot glass worth of nuts or half an avocado. Basically, that's the amount of fats that I would add to a dressing or put on top of the salad if I was using avocado or what have you. Um, or like a you know, added to that maybe a tablespoon of chia for omega-3 or flax. Uh, those are really high in fiber, kind of mid-range fat source. So they're, you know, you're only using a tablespoon, it's not that much. So that's typically how we lay out our day. It's fruit in the morning, smoothie for breakfast, a low fat salad for lunch. And if we do a low fat salad for lunch, we usually add chia to that to get our omega-3s. And then we have, our shot glass of fats or our half avocado with dinner so that we get a, a nice creamy grounding dinner and we do like lots of dark leafy greens our sprouts microgreens lots of vegetables different varieties we try to have 15 to 20 different varieties of vegetables in our salads if we can for the most part we want to get as much variety as we can to build our microbiome and keep it strong so that's typically how we set up our day but we try to stay low fat there are days where we put cashew cheese on our wraps and then we have a creamy dressing for the wraps and then we have a creamy salad for dinner but we don't stress out about it because the majority of our days stay low fat so if there are a couple days here or there that are a little higher fat like maybe 20 5% fat, 20 to 25% fat. We don't stress out about it. We just, we just enjoy our food. That's the whole point of it is to really love and enjoy our food, obviously without overindulging in way too much and then keeping that up for day after day after day, but just like rolling with it and enjoying it and always striving to stay at that low fat. Because when you're striving at low fat, then you're eating an abundance of fruits and vegetables and sprouts and herbs and spices and everything else. So you aren't focusing all your calories on the fats. That's typically a challenge for a lot of people when they do go raw is that they're not eating enough fruits and vegetables. They default to eating the higher fats, which can cause eventually insulin resistance, uh, sluggishness. It's a little harder to digest. Some people do get acne. So making sure that your fat intake is lower. We still need fats. We don't want to eliminate them. We just want to lower them down to an appropriate amount so you get enough healthy fats to produce your cells. Every single cell in our body has an outer layer, a phospholipid layer. So we need fats so that our cells can talk to each other and so they can flow fluidly. When you have too many fats or too many omega-6 fats, this can stiffen the cell wall and they don't communicate the same. So that's why omega-3 is really, really important, especially for brain health and cardiovascular health and lowering inflammation. Omega-6s are more pro-inflammatory. We still need omega-6s, but we don't need as many as we've been eating. So we try to keep our omega-6 intake lower. We still eat them, obviously cashews and tahini and stuff like that are high in omega-6 but because we choose chia seeds and chia seeds are also in our wraps so the wraps are high omega-3 we have flax in the tacos that we eat a fair amount of those lately um, the tacos are high omega-3 so we do try to make sure that we get adequate amounts of omega-3 and still enjoy a small amount of omega-6s and we try to balance that out across our day and it's been very helpful because since we aren't focusing on the fats we're focusing on fruits and vegetables, so we eat more of those and feel much more satiated and use our sugars more effectively because we're on the low fat end. Next up is mindset. This one is incredibly important to me and it's focusing on why I love raw food instead of feeling like I have to eat raw food or feeling like I need to hold up some level of appearances, I guess, on social media or to people I love. It's none of that. I don't do it because I have to. I don't do it because if I don't, I'm gonna get sick if I eat cooked food or 
I don't do it because if I don't do raw, I'm gonna get some disease or whatever. I don't do it because I believe raw food cures absolutely everything and I'm gonna be immortal. I don't do it for any of those reasons. I choose raw food because number one, I love raw food and I've come to have this great relationship with my food and I really thoroughly enjoy it and I enjoy my choices. That is why I choose raw food. I also choose raw food because I feel so good eating raw food and my health has dramatically changed over the last nine years from choosing raw food, so I really enjoy it. And obviously I'm vegan forever, so the, there's no reason why I would eat animal products ever. I eat a balanced, appropriate raw food diet and I make sure that I get adequate nutrition by eating a wide variety of foods. So I'm not worried about the vegan thing or like vegans lack protein or what have you. I'm totally okay and my blood tests and my gut tests are stellar so I'm not worried at all. Um, but I do it because I love it. I don't do it because I have to or because someone online scared me into it. Sure, in the beginning I really wanted to get some results but as I was growing in my raw food journey, I realized that I just wanted to eat this way because I love eating this way. And it really freed my mind out of the need to be perfect or live in this box of perfection. Because there's a lot of people online who are saying you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to restrict this, and you can't eat that, no fats, uh, no this, no that. And I don't follow any of that kind of stuff I, I do listen, I hear what they say, but it, it just doesn't resonate to be that restrictive or be in a perfect box because I'll live to be 280 or something. I don't know, but I just love raw food and I choose raw food and yeah, maybe I eat apple cider vinegar that some people don't agree with. Maybe I eat a ton of onions and garlic that other people might not agree with, but it works for me which leads me into the next thing that has kept me successful is that I do it my way. I do it the way that works for me. And for me, that looks like fruit in the morning, smoothie for breakfast, low fat salad for lunch, and a big salad for dinner. If we don't do a salad, we do a raw creation like burgers or tacos or nori rolls or whatever raw soups. So it's always like more like a savory dish with lots of greens and lots of different vegetables and variety. Those are some really important things for me. Whole food, so with the fiber intact and lots of variety. This is the way that I like to do raw and this is the way that has helped me to always choose raw. And I don't want to eat cooked food. I don't want to ever eat animal products. That's totally off the table. But I don't want to cook my food. I don't care for it. I don't think about it. My habits have changed so dramatically over the years because I've been so consistent with my choices that I don't even think about it anymore. It's not even a craving. I, have, I don't even know the last time I had a craving for the stuff that I used to eat because I just love my raw food so much and it's become such a habit that I just automatically choose it. So I do it my way. My way works for me and your way is gonna work for you if you stick to it and it's balanced. That's another thing too. Gotta have the balance in there as well. Fruit and greens. I like sprouts and microgreens, herbs and spices. Having a very wide range of everything has been super helpful in keeping me raw. Then continuing to educate always listening to new information, evolving with new science, not sticking in the dogma of the past. Obviously, those theories and ideas helped to create the new theories and ideas that we are exploring now, like the gut health and all that kind of stuff. Evolving and changing with ideas is really important so that we aren't stuck in some old ways or old belief systems that may not be serving us in general. So continuing to educate, actually Nate and I just finished a one year long program with doctors Rick and Karen Dina called Mastering Raw Food Nutrition and it was absolutely amazing. We really enjoyed learning from them. They're science-based, they are rational, 
They believe in both fruits and vegetables, the importance of, and they're just amazing individuals. They've been raw for a very long time and they're very balanced in their approach. So I highly recommend, if you are looking for some really good, deep raw food education, rawfoodeducation.com is their website and they start new sessions every September but they also do learn at your own pace, I believe. So check it out if you're interested, but always, always continue to learn and be open to listening to other perspectives that maybe bring up a little bit of emotion within you. You don't always have to have an opinion about everything. And if you do have an opinion about something, you don't always have to voice it. Just allow the other person or the information to exist as it is and then just say thank you for the information. Whether you agree with it or not, it doesn't matter. Just be grateful the information exists and then continue to dive in further without that emotion. That's a really great skill to have, to explore without having a bias and really learn more from that perspective instead of you know, jumping with our opinion all the time. It's really easy to share opinions. We all have tons of them and you're never gonna agree with absolutely everyone. I personally don't agree with a lot of stuff that a lot of people say, but I don't go and attack them for it or tell them they're wrong. I just take the information I say, interesting. I believe otherwise and I'm going to take everything in and just decide based on all of the information that I have as to my daily choices. Testing yourself is so important too. So we started testing our gut microbiomes in about 2021. So we're testing our microbiomes every six months just to see where they're at. We're curious. We're not doing it because we have health issues or anything like that. We want to be proactive in our health. We wanna see what the food we're eating is doing in our bodies. We don't wanna assume that everything's fine because yeah, we feel fine, but what if something was off? What if our guts weren't doing as well as we thought they would be? So testing is really important, especially if you are questioning if you need supplements. This is a big one too. A lot of people say, well, just take supplements just in case. Well, if you don't need them, there's no point in taking them. So get tested for things like B12, vitamin D, um, get your C-reactive protein tested, iron levels, all of that. Get tested and see where you're at because from there, you can tweak your diet. You can add a supplement if you need to. You can uh, choose higher calcium foods if your bone density is low. You can add more exercise if your bone density is low. So there's all different kinds of things that you can do. If you get your gut tested, you'll know what kind of fibers that your gut needs. Like maybe you need to eat more chicory or more onions and garlic or more apricots or apples or whatever. You will be able to know what you can do to tweak your diet to improve your state of health. Even if you're feeling great, that's another thing that people tend to fall into. And I used to call this the trap, where you're feeling awesome, you're like, everything's good. And you don't realize that maybe you're deficient in something or you're borderline deficient in something and symptoms aren't gonna show for another year or so. So you continue doing the things that you're doing, assuming that they're good, but they maybe are lacking in certain nutrients and eventually you end up having a deficiency or you end up feeling so good all the time that you just allow other stuff that maybe doesn't align with your goals into your diet because you're like, well, I feel good. I can do a cheat day or I can eat this or whatever. It's just not worth it. <laughs> so test yourself and make sure that everything is going good and constantly test yourself. Like even if it's just once a year, just to make sure that what you're doing is working for your body because each and every single body is different. So what one person is doing might not be what another person needs to do. So make sure that you work with your body and no one else's, which takes me into the next thing that has kept me successful is to not compare myself to other people. <laughs> This is a challenging one, definitely, because we see people who have been raw for, like for example, maybe you're looking at my story and you're like, she's been raw for nine years, I can't do it because I have kids or I have two jobs or whatever. Everybody is going to have their own challenges. I had my own challenges when I first went raw as well. I went through a divorce when I first went raw. I had my own challenges and my own challenges are my own challenges. Your challenges are your challenges. If we start to compare ourselves to each other, 
It's going to steal our joy because your journey is unique to you and only you can choose what you want to do or what you can do with what you have available. Maybe it's financial that you're having issues with. Maybe it's availability. Do the best you can with what you have. That's the whole message. Do what you can with what you have because not all of us are in the same boat. So we all have to make these different choices on our own. Maybe you have more time and you can prepare more raw food. Maybe you don't have time. Maybe you need to make quick meals. There's so many different um, areas on the spectrum of choosing our healthy habits and we're all going to have challenges. So don't compare yourself to others. Try your best, it's really hard, but if you do start to feel like you're comparing or that you're less than someone else, look inward. When you feel that inferiority within you, ask yourself why you feel that way. Is it because you aren't acting on the new habits that you want to build? Is it because you feel inferior in other areas of your life or you're lacking something within you or maybe you don't have the self-love that you've been wanting to work on? So if you start to feel yourself comparing yourself to another person, take that comparison and morph it into inspiration because comparison is the thief of joy inspiration is the power behind motivation so if you can feel inspired by somebody instead of comparing yourself to somebody that can help to stimulate you to make those healthy choices that you've been wanting to make say if they can do it i want to be able to try to do it within my means so when you do feel that comparison change it into inspiration next up focusing on what i want most this is a very interesting one because yes we want junk food yes we might want the pizza yes we might want the comfort yes we might want these foods because they taste good and to i know this is like a really hard one to wrap the mind around because we all know that those foods aren't ideal for us but let's take that out of the equation for now for just this one moment and allow yourself to be okay with that choice regardless if it's healthy or not we want the pizza we may want those things but what else do we want do we want health do we want to feel awesome do we want to feel hydrated or proud of ourselves or empowered or motivated or on track we might want all of this so ask yourself what you truly want if you really truly want that that's your prerogative. You can choose that if you want to. But if you really want to feel empowered and proud of yourself and healthy and energetic and be able to play with your kids or grandkids or just to feel good about your choices and to build those habits, if you really want that, then choose that. That's your prerogative as well. So taking all of that emotion, the good, the bad, all that, Take it out of the equation and ask yourself what you truly want. If you truly want the junk, go for it. If you truly want health and healing, then go for that. Choose what you truly want and focus on what you really want out of your life. If you really want to be building new habits, do that. If you really want to go to bed early and experience the benefits of that, do it. We all say, I want to do this and I want to do that, but we don't really want it enough. Otherwise, we would do it because we always choose what we want the most in the moment. So you gotta take the emotion out again, take the emotion out of it and ask yourself, what do you truly want for your life? If you truly want that health, then choose that health. That brings me to focusing on other areas of your life that are not just diet. Diet is just one small aspect of health. So exercise, proper sleep schedules, which I think is like one of the most important things. Hydrating yourself, spending time in nature, getting outside, having healthy relationships, following your passion, playing outside or, or dancing or doing a hobby, like learning a new instrument or a new language or whatever. So there's so many different areas of health that aren't tied to diet and we need to focus on those as well. And I think that's been a really big success for me is also ongoing we're always learning we're always growing we're always trying to improve so working on my sleep and obviously working on my exercise that's one challenging part of 
for me is getting into a good exercise routine, but knowing the value of those and not just putting all of the emphasis on the diet, but also working on our sleep schedule, working on our breath work, working on self-care, all of that stuff. Make sure that that is part of the equation as well has really helped me to be successful following this lifestyle. And in the early days, I would really rely a lot on being an example to others for my motivation to stay raw. And to this day, that is still part of the big mix of reasons why I choose a raw vegan diet is to be an example to others. So other people in my life were watching what I was doing, they were seeing what I was eating, they were trying some of my foods, and they were changing as well. Friends and family, people online were making positive choices in their life because I was making positive choices in my life. So we can each be an example to others by making these healthy choices within ourselves, within our own life, and that can be a great example to others to do the same. So if you're looking for another reason to choose something healthy at a party, at a gathering, at a wedding, or what have you, remember that you are being an example to others. Other people are gonna watch what you're going to choose, they're gonna watch what you're gonna say, and it may inspire them to do the same as well. So take that as a little bit of motivation. That's what really helped me in the early days of going raw. And finally, challenging myself to explore more about raw foods and to challenge myself in situations that feel challenging, like how to do raw going camping, or how will I choose raw at this specific family gathering, or, any, any challenge that you feel that you might be a little awkward in or you don't know the solution, plan it out, decide what you're gonna do, prepare the stuff that you're gonna take, and take action on your plan in the challenging situations. I've done videos on this before where a lot of people shy away from challenging social situations, for example. They don't wanna to go to that work gathering because they're gonna be eating whatever. They don't wanna to go to that wedding because there's nothing gonna be nothing there for them to eat. So they avoid it. But I like to challenge myself like a game in a way. How can I choose raw in this situation? Even though I might feel uncomfortable, I need to challenge myself in these situations because when you challenge yourself in challenging situations, that's when the real growth happens. It's easy to choose raw on your day off when you have all the time in the world to make raw foods or when you just got paid and you have a big paycheck and you can go get raw foods or whatever. Like those are easy times to choose raw. Choosing raw in the hard times, that's where the real growth happens. When you're choosing it when other people aren't, when you're choosing it on a road trip, when you're choosing it when you go camping. These are the challenging times that really grow you in your raw food journey. So thank you for sticking around for this long video. Thank you so, 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 so much. Again, for all the support and the love and for purchasing the eBooks and trying out our recipes and choosing raw for yourself, that's amazing. And I'm so happy that so many people have been enjoying our creations and enjoying adding more raw foods to their life. Even if they aren't a raw vegan, at least they're eating more plants, they're growing their guts. And even if you're going slow, it's still a better step than before. So thank you so much again for joining. Remember we've got 40% off all of our ebooks and this includes our ebook collections there's a new collection called the dehydrator fun collection that has my top three dehydrator fun recipes the hand salads wraps book the burger book where you can make there's 144 recipes in the burger book and then raw tacos so you can make all the fun tacos take them camping take them to your next family gathering and enjoy the crunch of the tacos that's a new collection that i have up there's other collections, like there's a starter kit, there's a deluxe starter kit with the books that are best for beginners. There's also a whole collection of all 21 eBooks that we've written um, together, Nate and I. So if you're looking for any of the recipes, 
at all. They're all 40% off with code rawfood40 and you can find the link here on the screen or in the description box below. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to click like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can click that little bell if you want to get notifications sent directly to you whenever I post a new video. Until the next one, thank you again for hanging out with me. I love you all so much Mwah! and fruit on.